Winston, come back with those fish and chips. I love the history of food and especially this dish that dates back almost a thousand years. Today I'm making a dish to celebrate the coronation of the king. And the king loved this dish so much that he gave his chef a country manor for making it. Now I don't mean King Charles III. I mean William. William I. William the Conqueror. William the first English Norman King. Dillagrout. Yes, Dillagrout. It's a crazy name, isn't it? But it was first made for King William, William the Conqueror, William the first, in 1066. 1066. That's a long time ago. That's, um, yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> when I heard that, and when I read that this is a dish that his chef, Teslan, made for the king, and the king loved it so much that he gave him a country manor for it, I thought, I've got to make it and see what it's like. I mean, the history alone. I'm starting off cutting some chicken breast into little pieces. Now, Dillagrout is a soup. It's uh, potage. Uh, potage is French for soup and uh, William was French, so Teslan was French too. So the potage, the Dillagrout soup, stew, uh, starts off usually with a capon. Now a capon is a castrated chicken that they castrate at the young age so that it makes the chicken tastier. Well, we're not going there today. So I'm using some chicken breast that I've cut into pieces. I've got some chicken thighs that I've ground up. And then I've got some almonds that I've soaked in water. You have to soak those overnight for some reason. Then I've got some pine nuts, some mace. Mace is like the outer kernel of the nutmeg. Then I've got some cloves. Cloves, who uses cloves now? That's just like a 1900s Victorian uh, spice. Some ginger, salt and sugar. And also some wine. It has to be a sweet wine. And this recipe, it seems, actually uses an Italian sweet wine. How would that be from France? All their good wines. Then I'm going to strain the water off the almonds and put them into a blender and then add some wine, lots of wine. Now in, in return for the country manor, Teslin, King William's chef, had to prepare Dillagrout for every coronation. And in fact, according to the Food History Almanac, this went on until 1821. 800 something years. Now, I don't think Teslin actually made this for 800 years. No, he didn't. But it was made till 1821. This dish was made for 800 years for all the king's coronations to 1821. That's just mind blowing. Take the wine and the almonds and blend until we have a, a nice, creamy, beautiful, uh, smooth, rich, foamy, soupy consistency. Then, oh, it smells good. And then the wine and the almonds is poured into a large pan. Look how creamy that is. Next, we add the chicken pieces. and then the minced and ground chicken, the pine nuts, now back in the 1100s nobody kept recipes so we don't know exactly the amounts that go into this so I've pretty much guessed them salt 
And finally, the sugar. Give it a stir, and then it goes on the stove. Um, we should probably put it on a wood-burning fire, you know, like we're at Hampton Court Palace or something like that. But you can put it on gas or electric. And we let it just bubble away for about an hour with the lid on. It's been bubbling away for an hour on the stove and it actually, it actually smells good. Oh, well, it definitely smells almondy. Now, will King Charles have this at his coronation? I don't think so. But knowing King Charles, he'd be fascinated with the history of it. If I'd known about this recipe a long time ago when I was working there at the palace, I'd love to have made it. I wonder if I'd have got a country manor. <laughs> right, let's dish it up and serve it to the king for his coronation. Dillagrout for the king's coronation. Now to taste it. The story says that the king would order three bowls of this and everybody that lived in the country manor would have to make this soup every year, this potage. And they'd make three bowls and it would be one for the king, one for his wife and one that the king would give to someone special. Here goes. It smells really almondy, but it has a strange smell as well. I guess that's the wine cooking out and all the spices too. It's not as strange as I thought. The pine nuts have stayed tight together, so there's a little crunch in there. But I guess the Victorian era brought along a more modern form of cooking. Um, Winston, come over here, I've got something for you. <laughs> See you again soon.